Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. At the end of the Mass today, we have the Novena Prayer to St. Therese. Today's Mass is being offered for the intentions of the members of the Little Flower Society, the Infant of Prague, and special blessings, birthday blessings for late P. Barn, healing for Carmen C. de Montilla, memorial for Carlos Salino, and thanksgiving for Joanne. So we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we lived on the surface of life and never really got serious about what is important. And so we ask the Lord for forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you call us to forgive each other. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you prayed for those who persecuted you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the Eucharist as a bond of our unity. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who adorn the sacred body of your church with the confession of holy martyrs, grant that, just as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought him eternal splendor, so it may be for us unending protection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, for Jew first and then Greek. For in it is revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous by faith will live. The wrath of God is indeed being revealed from heaven against every impiety and wickedness of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness. For what can be known about God is evident to them because God made it evident to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been able to be understood and perceived in what he has made. As a result, they have no excuse. For although they knew God, they did not accord him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain in their reasoning and their senseless minds were darkened. While claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God 
for the likeness of an image of mortal man, or of birds, or of four-legged animals, or of snakes. Therefore, God handed them over to impurity through the lust of their hearts, for the mutual degradation of their bodies. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and revered and worshiped the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word today, and night to night imparts knowledge. The heavens heavens proclaim proclaim the the glory of God. God. Not a word, nor a discourse, whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. The The heavens heavens proclaim proclaim the glory glory of God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at the table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with blunder and evil. You fools, did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate the Feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch. St. Ignatius was born around the time when Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. He was a convert to Christianity. And in the year 107, when the Emperor Trajan visited Antioch, he forced the Christians of that time to choose either between death or to give up their Christian belief. Well, St. Ignatius would not deny Christ, and so he was condemned to be put to death in Rome. St. Ignatius' great concern was for the unity of order in the Church. Perhaps even greater was his willingness to suffer martyrdom rather than to deny Christ. He himself did not pay, draw attention to his own suffering, but to the love of God, which gave him the strength to do what he did, to give his life for Jesus. A major theme of St. Luke's Gospel has to do with the meal, eating, 
and we have one of the examples here today. Jesus spends a great deal of time using the meal as an opportunity for him to share the good news with the people about the kingdom of God. Maybe to put it in another way, to tell them about what's important and what is not. And the Jewish people had a very strict procedure of when you were invited to dinner. It was like an ethic, ethic, etiquette code. You know, when you go someplace and the forks and everything has to be in the right place, everything has to be just so. But one of the things for the participants was that they would wash their hands beforehand. That meant that they were able to participate in the meal. Well, you know, Jesus comes along and of course, nothing could be further from the truth because these people were only interested in the outside of us, what's important, what we think is important. And Jesus is trying to point out to them, the only thing that's important is what's inside of each of us. Well, you and I have a difficult time with that too, don't we? We pretend. So much of what our life is trying to give the impression to, to others, well, Here's what I like you to think about me, who I am. And so we played a, we played a game, so to speak. Well, Jesus uses this particular opportunity, and we know from the rest of the gospel that Jesus met and ate with everybody, whether it was the Pharisees, whether it was those who didn't like him, the tax collectors, the marginalized, marginalized people, Everybody, nobody was excluded. And then when you think about it, the greatest gift that he gives to us is what we're celebrating here every time when we celebrate the Eucharist. It's the banquet of God. But Jesus is trying to remind us why we're here and why we should be paying attention to what we're doing and not go through simply the process Oh, yeah, we're going to stand up. We're going to have to do this at different times. It's all the externals for some people. Some believe you always have to kneel. Others believe we have to stand, we have to sit. We come up with all these wonderful rules that sometimes just after a while you say, what is this all about? But maybe the question is we should ask ourselves, what am I all about? And Jesus makes it very clear what it is. So while the Jewish people, the, especially the, the religious authorities who were putting up all these rules, kept challenging Jesus, he's now telling them something. He says, you know, what's really important is not what you do, but who you are. And that's the same message to each and every one of us. So we know that appearances can be deceiving. And we're experts, all of us. We pretend to be who we are, and inside sometimes we're filled with so much anger and frustration and so, so divisiveness that you say, what is this life all about? But what we really should be asking is, what am I all about? Because that is what Jesus is focusing his attention to. So this man's who invited him to the dinner, is only interested in the outward appearance. As long as you do certain things, you're okay. Maybe somewhat similar to, oh, I'm, I went to Mass, so I'm okay. That's only the first step. If that's all it is, we haven't learned anything yet. And the biggest challenge, of course, is what Jesus says, to become the body and blood of Christ, to become Christ and to share God's presence with others. That's what this is about. Oh, the easy way is, oh, I fulfilled my obligations. You know, I went to Mass and, and then we, we, you know, sometimes we come to the point when we didn't, we didn't go there, we committed a serious sin. Did Jesus ever say anything about that? You know, it's strange, the kind of things that we can come up with and then force other people to do. 
we're the biggest hypocrites in the world because it's all about what I want or what you want. And so St. Ignatius, who gave his whole life to be the presence of Christ, to identify himself with Jesus on the cross, who brought us salvation. It's not about me. It's not about any of us. It's all about God. That's what it is. And one of the one most beautiful gifts that God keeps inviting us, he keeps inviting us, and we keep saying, well, I'll make my own decision of whether I'm going to come or whether I'm going to join or whatever it is or why I'm not doing it. We have a million different reasons, and sometimes it's all about on the outside. It has nothing to do with the inside. And Jesus keeps pointing us, and he says, there's something that needs to be done. Notice he didn't, even, he didn't just criticize the Pharisees. He also gave him a challenge. And what was the challenge? For him to change his mind, the Pharisees' mind. He says, it's all about the heart. So put aside all these exterior rules and, and regulations that you, that, that you put on people, and you don't really get the point at all. It's not about you. It's about, in other words, it's not about God. It's about me. Are we any different? I'm afraid many times that's about the level where we are at. That's what even the Mass means to us. Oh, I don't like singing, so therefore I'm not going to participate. Or the Gospels, the readings, what does that have to do? Move on. I'm going to say my rosary. I'm going to do my prayers. I'm going to do what I want. Do I need to make a clearer picture? As we walk out of here, when we're being told, go now and share the good news, the presence of God with others, how do we do that? It's challenging, isn't it? Very challenging. Because letting go of some of our own perceptions that we have built up over a lifetime, it's hard to let go and say, and just even to admit, gee, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm on the wrong level of life. Maybe the things that I have been pursuing, it hasn't brought me happiness because I decided what happiness means for me or you, what it means for you, and it has nothing to do with God. And so Jesus, again, he waits patiently. And he says, when are you going to get it? When are you going to open your heart and really recognize that you are the beloved of God, that God needs us to be his presence, but we pretend, oh, I don't have time for that. Let somebody else do that. And, of course, God doesn't sit and say, okay, it's all over. He keeps inviting us, inviting us, and today he's asking us to change. Pope Francis, a couple of years ago, made an interesting statement. He said, the Eucharist, the Mass, is not a reward for saints. He says, no, it is the bread, the food for sinners. Wow. Does that fit your idea? Just think about it. God offers himself because we are sometimes so hypocritical. We are so egotistic that it, it, the whole world has to, has to rebound around us and my wishes and my goals and my plans has nothing to do with God. And God keeps inviting us and saying, when are you going to wake up? When are you going to really, truly accept the fact that you are loved? And of course, that God loves everyone just the way he loves you and me. And then to accept that and to try to do the best. Sometimes what that means is, I have to let go of my perceptions, so all the things that I consider as gospel truth, there's only one truth, and that is Jesus. It is God. And what does he tell us? There's only one commandment. 
to love the Lord your God with your whole mind, your whole heart, and your whole being, and to love each other as Jesus said, I love you. That's what it's all about. Boy, I got a long way to go. And I think if you're honest, you got a long way to go. Let us pray today that the Lord helps us to open our mind as he tried to open the mind of this, his people that he was with and to, to live the life that only God can accept, and that is to love each other as God loves us. Today, in this day of October, we find ourselves in a time of pain and sadness due to the violence that is being unleashed around the world. And so let us come to the Lord who wants to bring us together, who wants us to be the person that he created and share that blessedness with each other. And so we pray for the Palestinians and the Israeli people. We pray for the Ukrainians and the Russian Protestant sisters for the brutalized citizens of the Democratic Republic in the Congo, for the divisiveness among the people of the Sudan, in Myanmar and Haiti, and for so many people in our own home. Let us pray today and call on the different sides of the conflicts to engage in dialogue and search for peace in order to cease the escalation of death and horror and return to the path of justice and peace. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to open our heart that often can be like a stone so that we can truly believe that you love us and that to share your light and your presence with others, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society, Infant of Prague. And now for a moment, let us ask the Lord our own petitions, what we need the most. For all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, you keep inviting us to become the person that God created in each of us. Help us to let go of the things that prevent us from doing that. And most of all, keep affirming us so that we can affirm and support one another. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation of our homage be pleasing to you, O Lord, just as you accepted St. Ignatius, the wheat of Christ, made pure bread through his martyrdom and passion, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed mother, Ignatius, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and to under fever bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And let us take a moment to remember them by name. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Ignatius, Saint Therese, Saint Louis and Sally Martin, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously can peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you.
And now let us reach out and share that peace of Christ with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. I am the reed of Christ to be crowned by the teeth of beasts, that I may be found to be pure bread. Let us pray. May the heavenly bread we have received, O Lord, on the feast day of St. Ignatius, renew us and make us Christians in the name and in deed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. And the Novena prayer. O little Teresa of the child Jesus, please pick for me a rose from the heavenly garden, and send it to me as a message of love. O little flower of Jesus, ask God today to grant the favors I now place with confidence in your hands. St. Therese, help me to always believe as you did in God's great love for me, so that I might imitate your little way each day. Go in peace and have a wonderful day. God bless you.